What's up everybody? My name is Dan An. Welcome to Honestly. Today we are checking out Amazon's top four best selling chairs. Now, since I purchased these chairs, I noticed another chair crept up into the top spot, but it wouldn't come here on time for this review. Now on my left, I've got the generic office chair and this is the Firmex office chair. And both of these two chairs range at about $30, but here in the United States, there's a $20 shipping fee, bringing their grand totals closer to about $60 each. And then on my right, I've got the Neo chair and the Amazon basics chair, both chairs, which range closer to about $70. So all in, I spent about $235 for four chairs, which is absolutely ridiculous. But the real question is, are they any good? Well, let's get honest. These four chairs have a lot in common. The casters are a cheaper plastic caster, and then the legs are also made out of a cheaper plastic. It's pretty lightweight. And then when you sit in any one of these chairs, they all have a lot of play in the seat. They all kind of wiggle, jiggle sideways. This is meant to wiggle and jiggle like this. This is a stool, it's an active seating stool. So don't be deceived by that. But for example, if I sit in this chair and I sit fully back and I start to rock, I do feel a good amount of play in the seat when moving like this. And again, that happens in every single one of these chairs. The functionality in each each of the chairs is also the same as well. All chairs have a single rod here, and if you pull on that, it will rise the chair up and down. And then if you pull the thing out, it will unlock the back tilt. And then if you push it in, it locks the back tilt at the top. None of these chairs allow you to tilt lock when you're tilted like this, but they also all come with this knob in the front that kind of sits basically under your crotch area, which you can twist to tighten that back tilt tension in case you want it to be a little bit more difficult to rock backwards. All these chairs also have static arms that cannot be adjusted up or down because they are connected to the seat. Also, because they're connected to the seat like this, it is really difficult to go into an ergonomic rebel mode because as you can see, the arm sticks out pretty far and there's this bar here and that crashes into your thigh and again, that happens in every single chair. So I, I get it. I run a chair review channel. It's not the sexiest topic in the world, but I do what I do because I'm passionate about you all finding the best chair for your money. And I feel like in the chair space, there are just too many shady websites that try to push really crappy chairs. And that's why this exists. So if you appreciate that, please like this video, get subscribed. I'm trying to hit 50,000 subs by the end of 2022. And if there's a chair that you like that I reviewed on this channel, please consider using my links as that really helps me a lot. And if you have found your perfect chair or you have any questions, let me know that down in the comments below. One of my favorite parts of this is interacting with you all. I really appreciate your support. Thank you so much. I'm gonna disqualify these two chairs on my left because they are both incredibly uncomfortable to sit in. This Firmax here is uncomfortable for three reasons. One is you see these plastic parts. I am five foot six, 173 pounds, and this plastic starts to touch my upper back. If you are wider, and I have pretty like, 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 uh, what do you call it? Slender, what is it? Narrow shoulders, that's what it is. I have pretty narrow shoulders, but if you are someone who is on the bigger frame size, these plastic things will dig into your back in a way that's uncomfortable. This mesh doesn't offer any padding, so you're just gonna feel all that plastic. The second reason is because when you sit in this chair, look at the way the backrest is angled so that when you sit, and my back is locked right now, so when I sit in the back properly, look, look, look at this. What in the world? Like, why am I sitting this far back? And you can kind of sit upright, but then at that point, you don't really get a lot of support in your back. These plastic things start to feel uncomfortable on the sides, at least, you know, where my, where my love handles are. <laughs> so it's not the most comfortable thing in the world. And then the biggest reason why I don't love this chair is because look at where these side rests come. They are angled in so far that if you try to sit, and, look, this is my back opened up. Look what happens. As soon as I try to open up my back, I crash into the side. Now, if I try to lean back at all and try to run into it, it goes, it crashes even sooner. And so what I've noticed is that while sitting in this chair, not only am I turtling thanks to the crazy far lean back back, but in addition, because I can't open up my shoulders or because I can't open up my chest and I'm crashing into this, it encourages me to slouch and neck forward. Basically, this thing is going to encourage terrible posture. Please do not buy this. <laughs> This generic office chair over here is bad primarily because of this weirdly spaced lumbar. Now, this lumbar is connected to the backrest of the chair, meaning you cannot rip it off. And because of its weird positioning, again, I'm five foot six, 173 pounds. When I sit in this chair, maybe if I turn backwards, you guys can see better, but this plastic digs into where my belt loop would be on the waist of my pants. And that pushes into my back and it makes it extremely uncomfortable. Not only that, but you can also feel the plastic very clearly. So 
even if you're wearing, because sometimes I would wear shorts that have a little less intense of a waistline band on the pants, and even then I could feel it like jamming into my back. That material isn't as thick, and so I could feel then the plastic digging into my lower back or mid mid lower back, and I really didn't like it. This chair is not great. Also, the padding is pitiful on this. You feel the plastic immediately when sitting in this chair. Of the two remaining chairs, the Neo chair and the Amazon Basics chair, the Amazon Basics chair is the clear winner here. When looking at the Neo chair, this is an okay chair. It's not too bad. The seat cushion on this isn't the thickest, so me being 173 pounds, when I sat in it, I felt like I could feel the bottom, and after about an hour of sitting, I could really feel that bottom. In addition, the backrest is pretty narrow, which means that I can really pull my arms back and I'm fine, I can open that chest up, but, the place where the mesh back terminates is the scratchiest part on the chair, which means that's where your triceps rest. And so if you decide to wiggle it up and down at all, it really chafes those triceps and it really hurts. The armrests are also made out of plastic as well, making this chair just like an okay chair. And then there isn't a lot of space between the armrest and the front. So for your ergonomic rebels, like this position is really going to be uncomfortable because it starts to dig into your, tri uh, is to your thighs or is this your quad? I don't, yeah, your thighs pretty quickly. Now contrast that all to the Amazon Basics chair. The Amazon Basics chair, the best feature is that it is padded all around and it's got a really thick padding, which means you don't run into the same like, you know, my, my triceps are crashing into the hard edges, scratching on, you know, scratchy mesh here. As you can see, the seat is pretty flat and so I can really go back far and I don't run into any kind of tricep running into anything. I can really open up that chest and it feels pretty good. The lumbar support, there's a little extra padding here in the lumbar area, so it gives you a little additional support. And then the chair back is actually pretty darn high. It's definitely the tallest out of these four, but it goes even higher than the Steelcase Series 2. And so that makes this chair even good for people up to like six foot one, maybe even six foot two. In addition, the seat pad is the most padded seat out of all of these chairs. It's got a lot of padding in here. It is using a PU leather. It's probably gonna be a, a cheaper quality PU leather. So it may crack, it may tear after just a little while. But in terms of just sheer padding, it definitely offers the most. Now, even in terms of the arms, they also offer padding here, making it the most comfortable arms out of all these chairs. Go figure. Links to everything, again, will be down in the description below. Please use them as it helps my channel a lot. And if you want to know what chairs in the $200 to $400 price range have to offer, check out the playlist after this video. Until next time, everybody, stay safe, and as always, stay honest.